welcome to Oz Hoopers TV, episode one, featuring Bawali Bales. I'm Reese. that's Bailey, and today we're going to be interviewing one of the top prospects in the country, uh, Bawali Bales, out of New South Wales, newly committed to Hawaii. Um, he's currently down in the AIS, so we're going to go check on him and see what's up. How you going, mate? I'm good, boss. How are you? Not too bad. You got AIS right now? Yeah, we're we're here. It's, you know, long day today. Yeah. How how? Let's start with AIS. How did you get? How did you start getting noticed by AIS? And how did you get into the AIS? Man, to be honest, I don't like. Like I went to a couple like um the Australian development camps, like the ADCs. Um, I, my first one was like September 2017. And then I went to another one at the start of 2018. Oh, sorry. I think it was, yeah, at the start of 2018. But I don't know how I got like noticed to like go, go to those ADCs and stuff. But I'd say that those ADCs are what really kind of um, put me on the radar to like be able to get a scholarship here and stuff like that. Yeah, fair enough. And how 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 much has AIS impacted your game right now? Would you say, like the coaches um, and stuff there, and like what is AIS like for someone who doesn't go to AIS? Uh what so what it's like first of all is just like it's basically basketball every day. So you're doing about like three workouts plus weights a day. So two to three workouts plus weights a day, and that's just like every day. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. our rest days are Sunday. So that's the only day we don't have like any scheduled trainings or anything on. So it's just basically basketball 24-7 and you basically got to be on top of your stuff. But um, what was your first one again? Since that nine months, like when you started getting noticed by these scouts and stuff to go to AIS and to get picked for like Australian squads and stuff, like what was, have like your, has your game developed into? Like what? Like, you oh, know. yeah. Um, it's like, I've, I've, I feel like I've gotten a lot smarter. Like, my IQ, my decision-making, um, everything like that is kind of... I, I feel like in the short amount of time that I've been here, like I said, people have been here for about, like, two years, you know? Uh, I've only been here for eight months, and I feel like within that time, I've I've already developed, um, like, at that senior level. So, I feel like there's a big difference between playing at, like, the junior level and then, you know, when you're playing against, like, men and... And senior level, you've got to be able to, like, make better decision and decisions and problem solve and think a lot quicker. And that's something we do on a regular basis here every day. You know, a lot of drills and, um, you know, we've got some of the best coaches in the world. So, I feel like my decision making is probably one of the biggest things that I've noticed that have taken a turn. You know, whether it's just, like, being a lot more poised and, you know, reading plays and stuff like that. Yeah. And this past um, <laughs> Nationals, you kind of proved that. You averaged – how many did you average at the past Nationals? What was it? I think it was like. <laughs> I don't know. What was it? Do you know what it was? Nah, I don't. I didn't take note. <laughs> I know what you know what it was. You're gonna up it by like four points each. <laughs> I think it was like thirty, ten, and ten or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, where with the past nationals, would you say you were more disappointed with how you went, or more happy with how you went? I think New South Wales came four. Pointed for sure. Like everyone, um like comes up to me after the games and like even now like some of the boys talk about it like oh you're playing out of your mind at that, at that nationals and stuff like that but um i'm like like all all serious and it's like i'm disappointed like we finished fourth like i feel like what's there to be happy about you know um I, yeah i'm disappointed that we made the semis and then you know we lost to queensland don't laugh but yeah so i'm, I'm disappointed that we came fourth like no medal um my my goal was obviously a gold medal um, mm-hmm. or to just be in gold medal game and to be like that close. Uh, and like, there's a lot of good teams there as well. So, you know, I, I guess making it, making it to the semis is, is an achievement, but our, our goal was a gold medal and, you know, we didn't get that. So I don't feel like there's much to be happy about. Who would you say from that nationals was your toughest opponent? Would you say toughest. it was Vic? I didn't. I didn't verse the um the Vic the the um the better Vic team. Yeah. Versus them. Um. Queensland's obviously the best team we versed. I mean, they 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 came second, lost on a buzzer beater to 
to what is it? Is it Vic Vic A was the top team or Vic B? Uh, Vic A B yeah A. Oh no, there's no, there's no. There was just uh men's Vic and then there was Vic A. It was just men. Oh yeah, for, for the men's Vic, the team that won it. Um, yeah, like I said, we didn't verse them. Um, they obviously were like the favourites to win it. Um, but I guess Queensland was probably. I mean, there was South Australia. That was a, that was an overtime game. Um, I don't know. The toughest opponent was like well, Queensland. Definitely the best team we versed. But um. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know. Karen goes all right. Temri goes all right. But as far as like, I don't know. There's a lot of good teams that we verse, a lot of good players. Would you say Queensland was your toughest matchup because of uh, your uh, matchup? Or? I'd say Queensland was my <laughs> toughest matchup because um, they, in the semis, they were like doubling me, triple, tripling me, you know, which is, is obviously kind of hard. Is that the way to play you, or? <laughs> uh, like it was, it was pissing me off because, like, we got the first dub against Queensland, and obviously, like you know, they went and um, you know, they fixed a lot of things. Which credit to them, they won the game. You know what I mean? They won, they won the more important game. But um, I don't know. I just I was like, it was tough in the second game because it was you know a lot of people would guard me and stuff. So yeah. I don't know whether I don't really. That's like counts as a tough matchup, but it is what it is. Um, so we'll go back to your like when you started playing basketball. What made you start getting into basketball? I know you played rugby as well. What made you get into basketball? Um, so I started like just playing like local comp um, at Alexandria Stadium, home of the Sydney Comets, baby. You don't know what time it is. Um, yeah, so I just started playing with like my rugby friends and that. And they were just like, oh, like, um, come play with us for, for fun and everything like that. So then I was like, yeah, sweet. And, you know, we're just playing, we're just playing, like, we're just taking the piss, you know, just having fun. And then I was always, like, just, uh, like, running around, you know, shooting shots or whatever, playing a lot of defense. I was just quick, athletic. And then um, one of the parents from, like, a, the other teams was like, oh, she was saying to my mum, you should take your son to, like, the rep tryouts and stuff. And then my, my mom basically told me and well, basketball was always like my mom's dream. So she always wanted me to like play it and everything like that. So then, you know, I was kind of, I kind of didn't want to do it. You know what I mean? But I just thought, you know, it's something new. I've always been playing rugby. And my mom said, if you don't like, um, if you don't like basketball after this year, you can just go back to rugby. But um, yeah, basically that's what happened. And then I gave basketball a try for a year. And then I just kind of fell in love with it and then never really turned back. Played a few games of rugby last year, but, you know, making a comeback, this, that. Fair enough. But that's crazy. Your mum kind of forced you into the basketball, yeah. like, thing. She did come and, yeah. lie. Like, yeah. Um, and when did you start taking basketball? Like, when did you realise, like, damn, I'm actually kind of good at this. Like, I'm going to take this seriously and put all my time and effort into this. Probably about like 13. So I think I was going into top age, top age 14s. So I was always like, um, like me and the boys and that growing up, we were always running amok, you know what I mean? Like just like causing trouble, you know, just like typical, typical kids in the area and that like we didn't really have anything to do, you know? Um, so I started taking basketball serious and, and my mum was always telling me like, you know, you, you're decent at it, you know, you can go all right. So then, I kind of just did that, some something to invest my time in, you know. Yeah. So, um, sure. yeah, that happened. During that process of like developing your game and becoming better, and like, damn, I'm really good now. Who would you give credit to the most, coaching wise? Would you say it was Ooh, one of your tough. state coaches, or? Man, I got a lot of coaches to shout out. Shout out, Coach Paul Mallet. Um, you know, he was he was my under 12s coach when I first started basketball. He, like still still today I carry like a lot of stuff that he taught me from like 11 years old um, just like the basic fundamentals and like reading the game defensively and Damn. offensively did he um, coach you any like, other age groups or um, he coached a bit in um, 14s he was like in and out but after under 12s he kind of you know he likes coaching the younger boys so as we grew up he kind of just stayed with the um, younger groups you know what I mean he doesn't really like coaching uh, um, older boys but um Coach Jacob Jacobus, my state coach, 
Uh, he helped me a lot in terms of um, controlling my passion. You know what I mean? So I was like, you know, always like hot, like hot headed, and yeah, you know, going to yeah. players like didn't really know how to control my emotions. I mean, I was so he helped me a lot in that sense on how to like lead lead a team, like do what a point guard is supposed to do, and and um, make everyone around me better, and make everyone trust me and stuff like that. Um, who else? There's a lot of a lot of coaches on the way. Coach Coach Mahesh from AUSA constantly helps me like you know add to my like this is recently coach um helps me add stuff to my bag you know get moves down packed and you know get get a better feel for the game and stuff like that um those are probably the three biggest ones to be honest with you though that have you know helped me right now the coach is still like uh changing your game today like do they still um help you out a lot yeah um mainly here at shoot at ais it's kind of like um like, they don't necessarily, like, change your game, but they, like, they basically just, tell you, like, help you make better reads, if you get what I'm saying. Like, you should be doing this. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. this is what you do, like, stuff like that. It's not really, like, a change in your whole game type thing, but it's just making you, like, a smarter player and everything like that. And so you can progress at, at the senior college or, you know, NBL, NBA level and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah right. um, you're newly committed to Hawaii. Um, what, how much input did your family have on that decision or was it mainly your decision or? Um, my mom, had, my mom obviously has like, she has like a big say in, in where I was going to go. Um, you know, we visited Drexel, California Baptist and Hawaii. So I only did three uh, official visits and I think out of all of them, um, you know, Hawaii was just the one that we could relate to the most, you know, being Aboriginal. Um, it was kind of like, it reminded us of our own culture. You know, the people over there were lovely, like the culture, the vibes, um, the coaches, teammates, everything like that. And, you know, my mum loved it. So I think her saying that, like, um, you know, she wanted me to go there. And, you know, that that obviously, like, had a had a big, big impact on my decision. But ultimately, she she's going to support whatever whatever I decide to do, you know. Um, sure. she, she supports my, my decision so um, I kind of felt that as well and we both agreed that Hawaii was probably the, the best decision and it was hard but you know it was, it was a better one um, and how did the visit go did they welcome you with open arms and what role did they like promise you on the team um, I feel like with college nothing is like really promised like you can go like you could be what the best high school player, whatever. And, you know, you can promise, you, you can be promised, oh, you're going to start, you're going to get this, this and that. But if you go over there and you, you you mess up in training and stuff like that, like, this is just how I feel. Like, you, the coach is not going to trust you to put you on if you're, like, mess, messing up and, and stuff like that. So I feel like they said to me that, um, you know, I, there's room for me to come in and make an impact and, like like all the schools I visited, I obviously looked at um playing time, which was obviously like a big factor for me. Um and all the schools I could get like I could go in and make an impact straight away. But um with Hawaii, like I said, with all these schools um giving me the opportunity to come in and make impact, I had to look at other other areas on like where I'd want to be for, you know, four years or however long I'll spend in college. So um they basically just told me I have an opportunity to come in and make an impact. But they don't want me to, um, you know, they, they want me to go there as much as, as much as they, they want me. So I just kind of went with that and was like, yeah, like they weren't, a lot of the other schools were kind of like, like salesmen, if you get what I'm saying, like selling me where these schools were like, look, this is how it is. If you want it, Come get you know it. what I mean? Kind of like the, um, I like them being a bit real like that. If you get what I'm saying, the commerce too much, really, you know, if you'll get this, this and that it was kind of like, this is what you get. This is your job. You know, we'd love to have you, but um, you know, if you if you don't, it's not the end of the world. So yeah, yeah. That's I've seen a couple of um Australians have committed to Hawaii. Um, have you met the team yet, or what's the go with like yeah. when are you leaving and stuff like that? Okay, so I met I met the I went to like on my visit. Um, I went there on game day. So me and my mom got to watch them versus um Un University Santa Barbara. Or University of California, Santa Barbara, whatever. Um, 
So I got to meet all of the players. Um, went into the locker room after the game, everything like that, and um, went out with the boys after. Had a little night out, you know, um, everything like that. And, you know, I got a good vibe from, from the boys. I felt like I've known them for ages, even though I've only known them for like two days. And, um, yeah, so that that was that. But we got we got seven new players now. So um, a lot of people, we had a couple transfers um, and, you know, obviously a couple graduated. So we got a lot of we got a lot of new faces now. Um, only like fifty percent of the teams returning. And then we got another fifty percent coming in. So I'm looking to probably be over there July twenty fifth. Hundred percent. That would have been a crazy experience, like for a seventeen year old to go over to Hawaii with his mum and like visit the college and stuff. That would have been cool. We want to know how much you're averaging at Hawaii next season. I don't know. However many of the men upstairs wants me to. I don't know. So <laughs> happy. All right. So we're going to get into some fan questions. Um, I put these on our story. People swiped up to ask Wally uh, particular questions that they want to know the answer to. So the first question. It's going to be interesting, eh? Yeah. The first question is, are you nervous to hoop in the US with the current political and coronavirus situations? Let's hear it. Um. No, nah, I'm not nervous. Um, you know, obviously there's there's a lot of stuff going on over there that um, you know a lot of us don't don't agree with and stuff that has to change. And I feel like that's I'm not nervous because we have the same same things in Australia. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I've been putting up with everything like that my whole life anyway. So it's that's not really anything new to me. And in the political side and stuff like that, but. The coronavirus I mean, shit, we have that here too. So, we'll, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, fair and enough. it's not that bad in Hawaii anyway. The corona's not that bad in Hawaii, so should yeah, be right. Good. Yeah. Uh, the uh, second question is, what's your ethnicity? I'm vegan. <laughs> I'm original, and my dad's African American. Yeah. Uh, third question is how does it feel to know that you could play basketball as a career for the rest of your life man I feel like that's like the biggest blessing you know it's I kind of like as cliche as it sounds it's something that I genuinely like think about every day you know what I mean like I don't want to have like a typical like office job or like anything like that like to do something that you love and get paid for it is like you know not many people get to do that so it's definitely that's a blessing a what was it like um, for your first time being selected for Australia? How did you feel? Yeah, that was yeah, that was lit. That was um, I was special because when I got cut in, well, I didn't even get cut. I didn't even get invited to the um, to the tryouts in 2018. I didn't I didn't get invited to um, to the tryouts. How did that and, make you feel, bro? Like when I say I was crying every night and that, like <laughs> I felt like literally, bro. Like I felt like I let my pop down, like my like, pop, like my pop died. Like all I'm trying to do is like make my pop proud. Like, he died like in 2016. I felt like I let him down. I felt like I let my family down. You know, everybody was like counting on me. That was my first nationals as well. So you know, people will say like I'm being too hard on myself and everything like that. Like, I was a bottom ager as well, but I really felt like I had I had a chance to get in there and I didn't make it. So I, when I tell you I was crying myself to sleep every night like on on god i literally was like i was crying bro. Like, damn so then when i came back 2019 and made the team you know it was, a, it was a good feeling i was like i wasn't trying to go go cry again bro so i just tried to make sure i didn't really leave um any doubts who is someone that you look up to my mom um my mom like a single mom had me when she was 16 so, like, I, when I think of it, that's like me having a two-year-old kid right now. You know what I mean? Like, she had me at 16 as a single mom. Like, you know, obviously it wasn't easy. Um, you know, I had a good family, though, that, that helped her out a lot. Um, but just growing up, like, everything that she's done for me, like, I'm just like, wow. Like, you know, it's like such a strong, she's like such a strong woman. Um, like I said, I never had a dad. Like, my pop was my father figure, but then he died when I was young. Um, and then, like, my mom basically taught me how to, you know, be a man as well, you know what I mean? So, 
that's something I look up to. I look up to her every day. Even now, like with my two little brothers, she's still a single mom. Like we went through like a like a tough like like we had a tough time growing up. Like she wasn't always easy. Like we were like we were homeless for like seven eight months. Like but she always like made sure that like you know we had food. Like we had clothes. You know what I mean? Like we we're living out of a car at one point, but she's still like. You know, I'd never see her, like, break down in front of us. And, like, she was still trying to, like, give everything to us and stuff like that. So just seeing that growing up and not seeing her complain once and not seeing her, like, break down in front of us and, like, oh, this is too hard or, like, leave us or anything like that is just something that, like, I look up to and admire every day. Yeah, the real MVP. That sounds Fact. crazy. Uh, how long and often are you training sessions per week? Here. Um, it's, 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 um, different now because of Corona. So normally on average, like we'll basically, we'll have like team training sessions, which are like two, two and a half hours. But on top of that, we have like individuals, which are like an hour and a half and stuff like that. And then on top of that, you'll go and shoot by yourself, like on a shooting gun or get shots up with a partner and everything like that. So it's tough to tell like how long they are because it, it, it's a different schedule every day, if you get what I'm saying. They they map it out so, you know, you you don't really get injured and you don't load up in a bad way and everything like that. So, I don't so really know. Um, with the restrictions, what's it, what's different about it? So, with the restrictions, we, we don't have any contact right now. So, we, we're not scrimmaging. Right. Yeah. We're doing a lot of, like, non-contact stuff, whether it's, like, you know, split kick extras and, you know, four and three scramble defense and, you know, find open man and shots like that or coming off, coming off on boards and like making plays. Um, and then like a lot of individuals with like coaches and stuff like that, just um, turning our skills in and getting better. Someone asked, are you single? Yes. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing for That's just a straight up yes. Well, you want me to? Sit there and make a paragraph about it. <laughs> Man, here's the thing. Ah, let me give all these youngins a lesson. Hey, this age, girls are handbrakes, bro. <laughs> you already broke my heart, so I ain't trying to. I ain't can trying we, to. Can we get a uh, message to the single ladies out there? Man, I don't, if you don't, if you don't have God, best friends. If you don't have God, best friend, um, and you can cook, just hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. You asked and uh, finally, Kian Dennis wants to know how big you thought his dunk was on New South Wales. How what? How big you thought his dunk was on your team, New South Wales. I'm pretty sure in my mixtape, he gets dunked on, right? Or for what? <laughs> or for what? I thought it was going he, he gets dunked just... on, right? I think he did. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't remember him dunking on. I remember he got a little and one finger roll. Is that what he's talking about? Must be. It must be. I don't remember. I don't remember that. So sorry. sorry. Fuck. Um. Oh, Addison Ray, what the hell? I'm tripping <laughs> Addison Ray. Yeah. I don't want to name any states. I got I got homies in every state, but I think every <laughs> the answer to that. Oh, um, A Boogie. I like Polo G a lot as well. Ever? I guarded Ben Simmons at Nike All Asia, but I guess that doesn't really count. Like in like actual like competition, competition. Is that what we're doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say Ben Simmons, it. but competition. Who would it be? Man, there was this one guy at um basketball without borders. I don't even know his name, but um I think he's committed to Arizona. He was pretty tough. I don't know. What was my I have a lot, like, um, probably just people that are just like straight up disrespectful. I don't know to their to their parents a lot. Like, I see a lot of 
like you know my like my friends not of color um that's just like like go crazy at their mums and dads and stuff and I'm just like whoa bro but like if you're talking about like an actual pet peeve I'd probably just say people that are just like straight up dirty like you know what I mean best female hooper in Australia um that's tough so you gotta flip <laughs> probably Charlotte Charlotte Hill I think okay she goes hard LeBron, obviously. Why are we asking dumb questions now? <laughs> Favorite shoes to hoop in? Um, I have a lot of like, like different shoes. Like I don't have a lot of the same kind of shoes, but I really like the KD Eight. I like them. OKC slash Houston Rockets. <laughs> all right we're gonna end it right there thank you so much for joining us for wally appreciate you having you on it's um, all right you look <laughs> uh yeah we'll catch you later all right just um i'll send you my bank details <laughs> <laughs> uh so no all good thanks for having me brothers all none good. more none left oh yeah get this make sure you add this one Shout out to the 201617, not more, not less. That's it. Uh, okay, that's all for Oz Hoopers episode one. We'll see you next time on Oz Hoopers TV for episode two.